gender is a social construct and it's not a binary thing, right? It's not like, oh, you are a woman, you, you are not, right? I guess what I focus on is uh, trying to balance um, kind of my soft skills and my thinking skills and trying to bring both of those together for me. So when I interact with people, I tend to use the way I think um, to figure out the course I'm gonna go, but then I also try and um, be empathetic and understand that people come from different places. You know, in terms of like femininity, masculinity, it's like a huge spectrum. And I do think that, you know, I'm, you know, not as feminine as some women would be, right? So yeah, it's a really interesting thing to think about. Being a woman is very powerful. I've chosen to be a mother and I've also chosen to be a wife. I am very fortunate to be a sister and a daughter and a cousin. And all of that is part of who I am along with my identity as being female. I'm blessed to know nine generations of women in my family, and I know their history, their stories. I know from my family that we are capable of doing anything and everything. And so as a woman, I feel like that's my responsibility to carry that torch of overcoming all obstacles. Navigating the workplace as a woman has taken me years to figure out. One thing that I noticed kind of coming out of early career to getting a little older is that there were so many microaggressions happening early on in my career that I didn't even realize in the moment. I had to realize like the biases that still exist in our society and how to be strategic in going after different positions I've wanted um, within the teaching profession. I navigate it a little bit differently now in that like I recognize when when things feel a little bit off through no fault of like, you know, whatever it is. I think that's the thing about microaggressions is that we all make them. Um, and because of the kind of socialized nature of gender, people are gonna say things, right? And so now I like tend to lead with curiosity of like, hey, you, you know, you said this, what did you mean by that? And kind of get people to like reflect on, on what they said. When I worked at Bridgestone Firestone as an engineer, it was a little more challenging. I was the only female and in my factory, I was the highest ranking woman when I hired in. And it was sometimes awkward. I got a lot of compliments on my outfits. And so I found that I had to really just focus on the work. In some ways, it gave me huge advantages. People would remember what I did well, I think more than I deserved sometimes because I was really the only woman. People, Bridgestone Firestone's a Japanese company, people would come from Japan and they would say, we've heard of you, Christy san And I was like, wow. <laughs> so it can be an advantage and a disadvantage, but I, I think if you're competent, um, it can really sometimes highlight some of the things that you do and get some additional notice if, if you are in a field where it's less frequent. For me, it's about knowing what you're about, knowing what you believe in, and being able to use that every day, everywhere you go. No matter where I am, whether it's at work, at home, or even just out in the world, I just have to remember who I am. And if I know who I am, then I'm going to be okay. There's a level of confidence that has to be brought in any situation you walk yourself into. As a female teacher, I hope to inspire both boys and girls. I hope to be seen as a leader uh, at Bullis, and so to be sort of a female leader, I think can be an important inspiration for students. I want young men to see passionate, educated, competent women in front of them. I also want to be a role model. I want to show them that there is balance in life. There is ways to practice patience. The words we say matter. The way we use our time matters. And so if they can come into my room to be able to learn all those lessons, I can 
say that I had a successful day. Showing young girls how women can be fun and passionate and smart um, all at the same time and deserving of respect, of self-respect. Loving ourselves for who we are, not having to change ourselves for anyone or anyone's approval. I also um, hope to show students that um, you can be a woman in science, even if it's a male-dominated field. And I hope to show all students that science is really fun and that anyone can do science. And it's a great uh, topic to pursue in college. I see a lot of girls who, you know, in chemistry, physics, math, right, start to struggle a little bit or have some difficulty and they immediately say, oh, well, it must not be for me, right? Girls are not good at math. That's my, my biggest kind of message that I try and push for girls, particularly in STEM, is like, stick with it. This isn't the end all be all. You have so many more years ahead of you. I think one of the things I bring to teaching is that I, I was a non-teacher before and so that there are ways to not only teach but do other jobs and that you also can change careers and do something different. A career tends to be really long so it's nice to kind of change sometimes. My goal every day is for students to feel comfortable coming into my classroom knowing that they can be 100% their authentic selves and I am thrilled to have them in my room.